Hello everybody. Welcome to my blog Edis English Literature. I am Ardhendu De. Today we are going to discuss the usage of grammar in the learning of English language and why the reading grammar for learning English is so essential when we are talking about learning English as a second language. Besides the differences at different period, there are considerable differences in the language format of English speakers even at the present day. Every region has some peculiarities in the way in which its speakers use their English. There are, for example, the peculiarities of English of Ireland and of Scotland and of India. Even in Indian subcontinent, there are in several pockets where English, uh, English is uh, differently uttered or pronounced. Even English is where the first language, even the immigrations or the immigrants utterances of the English has some differences in the Irish pocket, in the Scottish pocket or in Canada or in or in America, there are large pockets of uh, diaspora and those diaspora or those immigrants are making their English in their own variety. So learning English and its tone and its variegated format is itself an interesting subject. Now uh, we are in such a condition that an Englishman can have the talking of like that of an American or the American is talking that of the Englishmanly way. So the varieties of utterances, varieties of dialects and varieties of different formats of interpreting that language or telling or communicating that language. We are uh, saying that many of the varieties of English are there in the African pockets. So English as is told and as it is uttered or learned has different patterns in different pockets. In in, in, in a way, English is somewhere the native language, in, in somewhere the English is the second language or in, in some of the pockets of the world, English is simultaneously going parallel to their mother tongue. So, learning English and making a standard of it is quite a difficult one. So, learning the true English, that means English mainly English or the England's English is quite essential in some way to learn the basics of the language then there is no difficulty or there is no such um, obligations of telling or making that standpoint always but it is quite essential to learn the basics of the language and the basics of the language can only be learned from the root of that language and in that way uh, the grammar understanding or the grammar grammaticality or the very structure of the language is to be understood. If not learned properly, uh, the way of Englishmanly English is quite difficult to pronounce or difficult to comprehend. In that way, learning grammar or the basics of the grammar is quite essential for English speakers. So taking this whole discussion into a fruitful result, we must say that learning language should not be without grammar or the, without the basics of grammar but at the same time the grammar or grammatical technicality should not be a burden in the way of learning the language that should be a um, balanced way of interpreting that subject now as we are talking about if these peculiarities or these dialectical varieties amount to so much that they begin to interfere with our understanding the person who have them we say that uh, such person speaks a dialect of english rather than the english itself which in contradiction is known as standard english now what the standard english and what the dialectical english is quite a debatable format because the old english the origin of the old english has been in the middle ages several of its dialects still surviving it was the chosarian format that made out of all these three dialects uh, someone is prominent then the prominence again and the standard english is formed but from the primitive times so many of the english varieties are still standing so uh, taking a standard and taking the dialect and uh, making that dialect um, neglectable is not 
the mode of discussion rather the basics of the grammar in all of these dialects and as well as standard english format is there and we should follow the basics of the grammar and by which we can have the english or we can have the totality of the english language or we can make this language dynamic and much forward for a better communication skills or better communication medium so that english becomes the language or english remain the language of foremost importance in modern society several of the english that we say that we see that we feel that we hear are some good english and bad english you know it is not divided into dialectical format but it's the good english that is standard acceptable sober and the bad english that is the cliche or that is the sluggish or that is the slang format now there is also differences between what we call good english and bad or vulgar um, so uh, by good english we mean those words and those meanings uh, which are national or which is given the importance or taking it a format of acceptance Uh, those ways of putting them together that are used generally by the best educated people of the present day and there is a bad english uh, simply uh, that which is not approved and accepted by good and careful speakers and writers then again we find that good english uh, when spoken uh, differs slightly from the language of the written books in ordinary conversation we use for instance certain form of words familiar expressions loose arrangement of our sentences uh, these are colloquial speech we do not seem uh, fitted for the higher kind of literature if we are speaking that uh, if, if those spoken words are taken into granted into the literature we have in this good english is reputable recent and the way of classification of good english into standard literary english and standard spoken english so standard spoken english Uh, have the acceptance of good english but when uh, that pocket of standardity is loosened or rather uh, the sluggishness or the slang format of the language each and every language has this slang format in fact those english are not accepted as a good english now a uh, dialectical format uh, which is having some changes due to some uh, geographical or social standard is to be accepted as a language format so these kind of varieties of the english are to be taken into granted now when we are talking about so much varieties and the on flow of the english language and its formats we obviously keeping in mind that in those standard spoken formats as well as in colloquial um colloquial other dialectical formats or in written format even in the slang formats in all of the varieties of the language in all of the platforms of the language uh, there is a basic grammar and we must understand that basic grammar uh, the importance of grammar learning is for that purpose now we have seen that english has changed much from what it was at first that i was talking about uh, that there were a variety of english spoken even now uh, when however we say simply english we mean that standard english of our own time and the systematic discussions of the good and, and the systematic discussions of the good and approved uses of the english form which we call english grammar now uh, look at this diagram which i am showing here is the entire list of how the english language and its dialects has its variety of formats and how it changed throughout the time and how the english dialects or english varieties had spread out in the colonial period as well as in renaissance period so after completing all these things we say that english is diversifying it's reaching every nook and corner of the world and making that learning a standpoint or making that learning point is tit first as well as comfortable one we as a literary student we as a student of the english language must understand that comprehension of the language without grammar is quite improbable and baseless
the descriptions and the classifications of the different words we use in speaking and writing is the very etymology. Um, the term properly means a discussion of the true source of a word. But by writing a language or uh, by writers uh, on language, its meaning has been extended to include the classifications of words, the considerations of the changes of the forms and the history of the uh, growth and the entire history of the words is within the etymology. So we cannot comprehend the grammar without etymological history. So our understanding of the each and every parts of speech, each and every words of a grammatical syntax must be with the notions of etymology. So etymological understanding of the word of English language is a must when we are understanding a language. There are patterns of telling words and that is syntax, an account of the way in which words are properly combined to express our thoughts and feelings. This is known as syntax and the term literally means putting together. Yes, putting together those words meaningfully and with standard format is the other way of understanding the language. So when we are understanding a language when we are understanding the grammatical language, in fact, we must study the syntax of that language. We find that if phonetics is included within the grammar format, I say yes, because without understanding the sound patterns, we cannot have that accent correctly. As I'm speaking in Indian English, there are variety, variety of, of that, that dialect format throughout the world in English language. An account of sounds and alphabets of the language is in fact how we speak words uh, are the very patterns of the phonetics. Now why we should study these phonetics? We should study even we respect the dialectical formats. We have to correctly sound those words that we find in English language and how they are represented by letters should also be studied. Strictly speaking, this uh, subject does not form the part of grammar if I say uh, to an extended way. But uh, this term is uh, generally understood a kind of a uh, grammar of sounds. Uh, it is quite important in connection with the discussions of the formation of words and some knowledge of the sound patterns of the very um, design of this uttering of the sounds is a must. English grammar is studied for a variety of purposes, you know, uh, of which correctness of expression is one and the second one, uh, each and everybody uh, wants to uh, reach that epitome of that perfectness by which the standardity of a particular language is uh, given a flag bearer. If someone is speaking English, his motive or goal should be the standard one. But what comes out if the variety, if such, a, such and such varieties or dialectical formats pops up, then it is acceptable. But his purpose of interpreting or uttering that language should be the standard one. That's another point. Now, how we can uh, learn this grammar? It is constant practice under never falling watch and correctness of your way of uh, making that uh, three parameters, particularly the understanding of the syntax, the phonetics, as well as etymological understanding. You can have the English grammar in your way. And I find your English grammar uh, or understanding of the English grammar is a valuable study if you are taking English as a serious subject for you. Uh, grammar can help but chiefly in the higher stages of the works. Uh, it must not be supposed either uh, that the writer of a grammar makes the rules and laws of the language. He only reports the fact of a good language in a orderly way so that uh, they may be easily referred to or learned. Um, again, uh, many of us want to learn other languages than English and we want to learn other forms of English uh, too. But uh, reaching to that language uh, through English is quite possible because English is quite a ling language nowadays and you can have that um, way of understanding or way of 
getting that knowledge through English. So uh, English knowledge or acknowledgement of English grammar is a must. Again, uh, for interest of language studies, we somehow want to know uh, what the language is and to realize that uh, what is worthy for us or not. For the study of language has a to tell about the history of man and what he does um, in the present world and what he has done in the world previous. For instance, what we know of the Aryans and as language in the principal means by which the minds of persons are disclosed. So we can we cannot study the minds working without knowing any uh, or without understanding of the language. So the language studies or the formation of the language and how it evolved the grammaticality of the language also makes a proper understanding of the people and the time. For all these purposes we need that knowledge of language. And grammar is the way by which we can have the knowledge of that language. So when we are understanding the English way of people or the English way of society or the English people or the English society from a distant observer, English grammar might be the easiest and surest step by which we can march forward to learn that language or to learn that people. So I think my this video lecture will obviously help you to get why we are studying English grammar and why we should learn English grammar. And if you have any other points to add, just make some comments in the comment box. I will respond to that. Like, share, comment and obviously subscribe to my channel. Bye bye.